This is News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss of WDWNT.com. Here now are the top Disney Park stories from around the world for March 21st, 2022. Following almost adversarial comments from Florida Governor Ron DeSantis related to the company's denouncement of the Parental Rights and Education Bill, the Florida Legislature has passed a second bill entitled the Stop Woke Act, targeting Disney and other companies' diversity training programs. According to the Orlando Sentinel, House Republican sponsor of the bill, Brian Avila, specifically cited Disney's Reimagine Tomorrow program as one target of the bill. The act is designed to limit what companies and educators can say regarding racial issues, particularly critical race theory. In particular, it bans any school or corporation from teaching that an individual's moral character or status as either privileged or oppressed is necessarily determined by his or her race, color, sex, or national origin. Disney bills reimagine tomorrow as, quote, our way of amplifying underrepresented voices and old told stories, as well as championing the importance of accurate representation in media and entertainment, because we're all greater than a single story and we all deserve to feel seen, heard and understood. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis said when the bill was proposed in December, quote, in Florida, we are taking a stand against the state sanctioned racism that is critical race theory. We must protect Florida workers against the hostile work environment that is created when large corporations force their employees to endure CRT inspired training and indoctrination per CBS News. Critics have argued that the bill is unconstitutional and a blatant violation of the First Amendment. This bill comes mere days after the highly controversial bill dubbed Don't Say Gay by critics passed the Florida legislature. Of course, CEO Bob Chapek famously bungled his response and eventual a denunciation of the act. And Disney Imagineers have used that outrage in recent weeks as a case to reverse the company's move from, uh, uh, from Burbank to Lake Nona, Florida. This is this wild roller coaster ride will not stop. I know some of you keep saying, why, why do we keep talking about politics? Well, obviously, this is a really big deal. Obviously, Disney made a big deal of their fifth key, the inclusion key, which does, in, in fact, include um, that reimagined tomorrow program. So the fact that there is a bill in a state where most of Disney's employees are um, that uh, is basically denouncing that um, is obviously a very big deal for cast members here in Orlando. So. Uh, this is wild. I remember when Disney was at war with uh, the governor in California. Now they're at war with the governor in Florida. They can't they can't get along with anyone anymore. It seems an interesting interesting development. We'll see where we'll see where this goes. A short notice was sent to travel agents informing them that the Walt Disney Travel Company will be pausing all new bookings for private ground transportation until further notice. The brief statement reads as follows, quote, new bookings are currently unavailable for private ground transportation to and from Walt Disney World Resort and other surrounding areas. The Walt Disney Travel Company package add-on will be unavailable until further notice. Due to unforeseen circumstances, some existing private ground transportation reservations may be impacted. Affected guests and travel agents will receive a phone call if their reservation has been impacted. So you may remember shortly after Disney ended Magical Express, they started the ability to add on transportation booked through either the Disney Travel Company or a travel agent. Um, that has now ended very suddenly, almost uh, just, just a number of weeks after it began. The theory is that maybe Disney is on the cusp of bringing in some sort of transportation uh, between the airport and resorts. And before you get too excited, it ain't going to be free. Uh, the rumor on the street is that minivans will come back in a solely in the capacity of offering transportation to and from Orlando International Airport. So stay tuned. That's the rumor. We don't know anything yet, but the sudden end of this booking does seem to indicate that Disney's about to start charging people on their own. According to CNBC, Disney CEO Bob Chapek and former CEO Bob Iger had a falling out and no longer keep in close contact. The falling out occurred around the time Iger resigned as CEO of the company. Iger resigned in 2020, just weeks before all Disney parks shut down due to the COVID pandemic. Iger appointed Chapek as his successor. Quote, I can't think of a better person to succeed me in this role, said Iger. <laughs> well, hindsight's 2020. That was, of course, a day before Disney started closing its parks. Uh, quote, I've watched Bob Iger lead this company to amazing new heights, and I've learned an enormous amount from that experience, said Chapek. New York Times columnist uh, Ben Smith published a story about a month later after reaching out to Bob Iger by email. Iger told Smith he wasn't going to leave Chapek to deal with the new uh, 
crisis alone and would stick around to assist him in running the company. In this email, Iger said, quote, a crisis of this magnitude and impact on Disney would necessarily result in my actively helping Bob Chapek and the company contend with it, particularly since I ran the company for 15 years. Chapek was reportedly furious when he saw this story and expressed that he did not need any assistance running the company. An individual who witnessed Chapek's reaction said, quote, it was a turning point moment. And ever since then, Iger and Chapek have not been able or willing to mend their relationship. So uh, I love this. Obviously, this is great um, because it's just more proof that Bob Chapek cannot get along with anyone. Just everyone he's dealt with who has the free will to form an opinion publicly just either distance themselves from him or publicly denounces him. And this started way back uh, with the opening of Pandora, the world of Avatar, where James Cameron specifically said in an interview, Bob Chapek deserves none of the credit for this. Tom Staggs is the guy that made this happen. Uh, and it continues on to this point where um, you may remember, of course, Chapek was supposed to appear at Destination D. He canceled that. The supposed reason he canceled that was to attend a dinner uh, for it was sort of Bob Iger's farewell dinner from the Disney company. It turns out Chapek did go to that, was seated at a separate table, and he and Iger never spoke. And Iger did not specifically thank him among all the many people he thanked in the Disney company uh, for his time there. So I think that speaks volumes. And, and we know um, Bob Chapek you know, has a tendency to have these grudges with people. He's had them with people of way less stature in the industry. And uh, so it so it continues an interesting, um, interesting turn of events, though. Big Top Souvenirs of the Magic Kingdom is now selling and using Werther's original products with the center ring snacks. Caramel corn made with Werther's original is now available and advertised on the main sign. The 50th anniversary caramel apple made with Werther's original is also available at the store. According to cast members, Werther's is not sponsoring the location, but they will continue to sell items made with Werther's products. The Dapper Dans are back performing in their rightful place on Main Street USA in the Magic Kingdom. They perform classic songs including It's a Small World, Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, and more. And they also had a few jokes for us, and now they're right there on the street again, not up on the train station, not on a trolley, actually back to where they used to be. You can watch their return performance on Main Street right here on our YouTube channel. Long after the attraction officially closed, the last sign has finally been removed from Stitch's Great Escape. Of course, Stitch's Great Escape closed back in 2018, but various signs for the attraction remained covered by tarps. The entrance wait time sign, which has been covered for years now, was finally taken down and the hole patched up. Until the COVID shutdown, Stitch's Great Escape remained open as a Stitch meet and greet location. However, with character meet and greets temporarily suspended due to health and safety regulations, the location met its long awaited uh, demise. Um, of course, it's worth noting that Stitch's, in, uh, whatever it was, the Alien Encounter Stitch meet and greet, I forget the full name, but whatever it was, it was scheduled to close right around the time of the pandemic anyway. They were about to begin work. In fact, uh, permits were filed to begin work on the Wreck-It Ralph attraction that was supposed to go in this space. Um, and then obviously COVID happened, stalled the project. And we don't really know where the project is at this point, but the fact that they're still ripping signs down might be a sign that maybe they're ready to pick this attraction back up. We'll have to wait and see. Space 220 Restaurant, which opened last fall at Epcot, has an updated menu already. Uh, we took the Space Elevator 220 miles up to try some of the new lunch items earlier today and check in on some old favorites. Check out the full review on our website. In fact, as soon as we wrap up recording this show, we're all heading back there for dinner. There's a whole new dinner menu we got to check out. Lauren's making a, a face because she had to go there for lunch. And now we have to, this is what we do for a living, Lauren. We have to go, we go eat there for lunch. And then four hours later, you have to eat again. It's a terrible lifestyle we live, but it's all for you at home. Walt, <laughs> Walt is the Imagineer Zach Ridley has shared a new piece of concept art and more details about Connections Cafe and Eatery coming soon to Epcot. That's a place we'll have to go have breakfast, lunch, and dinner the first day that opens, so get ready for that. Ridley confirms in his post that Starbucks will be part of Connections Cafe. Of course, we here at WDWNT told you that like three or four years ago. Uh, he wrote the following quote, here is an early concept rendering for Connections Cafe at Epcot as seen from the south side. Uh, this is essentially the bakery side, the Starbucks side. Uh, this is the first time we've seen this concept art before though. It beautifully illustrates a few points of connection that were designed for our guests in this new space, how the gardens and greenery within World Celebration will complement the interiors, allowing our guests to harmonize with nature outside, how friends and family will gather together around a meal or beverage, and how show kitchens will provide a culinary experience for our guests within. 
The kitchen you see uh, represented here will actually be responsible for making a variety of baked goods, which will be available at Connections Eatery. You can just make out how the exterior approach reestablishes the arc of the building, expressing the original concept of a radial grid. And like the adjacent creation shop, light and color will play a big part in the interior aesthetic, including the same floor to ceiling glazing and a massive hand-painted mural that's previously been mentioned uh, within the Connections Eatery. One very important detail he wanted to share about Connections Cafe is that it will be the future home of Starbucks at Epcot when the location opens in the spring. So we know it's going to open in the spring. Again, the theory is Memorial Day weekend, both uh, Cosmic Rewind and this next door adjacent bakery and restaurant would open. It makes a lot of sense, but that's just rumor at this point. Disney Vacation Club members are excited that Moonlight Magic events have returned and we had the opportunity to attend the first event since the pandemic hit at Epcot this week. You can check out the full report on our website. Uh, there were some incredibly rare characters. Super cool. Check it out. We tried the new pretzel bread pudding from Summerfest in Germany in Epcot. The pretzel bread pudding comes topped with a sweet icing and caramel sauce. It costs $4.79. We then stopped into Sunshine Seasons to try out the new Pluto Petite Cake. It's a mango mousse cake with honey jelly. It costs $6.29. Uh, warning with that one, it may only be available at Moonlight Magic events. So just so you know, sometimes they have leftovers the next day for regular guests. We then hop on over to Kusafiri at Animal Kingdom. This is in Africa to try a, a marinated pork flatbread, which is now available at the Shop and Bakery. Kusafiri, again, located in Africa, debuted a new menu last fall. The flatbread is marinated pork topped with cucumber tomato salad, harissa aioli, greens, and served with house-made chips. Cost $10.49. Reviews of all these items, as always, at WDWNT.com, including all of our Space 220 meals from today. A new America on Parade varsity jacket has joined the vault collection in honor of the 50th anniversary. America on Parade, of course, ran from 1975 to 1976 at Disneyland and Disney World to celebrate America's bicentennial. The varsity jacket throws back to the early days of the kingdom. This item is from the fifth birthday of Walt Disney World, which, of course, was in 76, also the bicentennial. Jacket has red, white, and blue striped cuffs on the white sleeves. Uh, the number 76 is a reference to the Magic Kingdom's fifth anniversary, but also 1776, of course. The patch has fuzzy detailing and the original Walt Disney World Resort logo in red, white, and blue. The jacket costs $99.99, and yes, I had to have one. Super cool. A shiny new tumbler featuring our favorite dragon, Figment, has landed at the World of Disney and Disney Springs. Tumblr is a clear base, but is reflective in the light. An image of Figment is featured flying among a pattern of stars. And below Figment, the tumbler says one little spark in orange lettering. It has a purple lid with a matching straw and an attachment uh, shaped like a light bulb on the straw. It costs $24.99. The Grand Cottage at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa opened uh, this week. Uh, we got a chance to try everything there, including the Grand Easter Box. We, of course, don't recommend the Grand Easter Box as it's $50, but it only comes with 40 something dollars worth of food, which you could buy separately. I don't know who prices these things. I have no idea. Um, even with the cookie, it should be about 40 bucks, honestly. But nonetheless, our review of the box, a review of everything else we tried at the Grand Cottage, all these Easter treats on our website. When Trails End Restaurant reopened last year without its signature buffet, we found the experience to be quite satisfactory and we're pleased with the dinner options. But now the eatery has made a few changes, so we went back to check it out. Among the changes, uh, pulled pork has replaced the sausage and uh, they have this amazing dessert trio now, these jars, um, and the banana pudding is unbelievable. Full review, say it with me, on our website. We stopped by Disney's Port Orleans Resort French Quarter to try some of the new menu items at Scat Cat's Club, located off Disney Port Orleans Resort French Quarter's main lobby. We decided to try two appetizers and three drinks. We ordered Scat Cat beignets, an oyster beignet po' boy, a bebop Bloody Mary, a bomb famille's bourbon peach tea. By the way, that's a reference to the original name of the establishment. That was a table service restaurant called Bomb Famille's in that space. And a syncopation shift. The oyster beignet po' boy is a Mickey-shaped beignet with fried oysters, lettuce, tomato, Cajun remoulade, and house-made pickles served with potato chips for 15 bucks. The Scat Cat beignets are a trio of Mickey beignets served with red pepper jelly, pimento cheese, green goddess dressing, and dusted with powdered sugar for 10 bucks. And the Bebop Bloody Mary consists of absolute vodka, spicy Bloody Mary mix, shrimp andouille sausage, and celery for 15. The syncopation shift is made of Tito's handmade vodka, Bayou Silver Rum, 
uh, Cruzan Mango Rum, and Midori Melon Liqueur with pineapple juice and a souvenir glow cube for $18. Last but not least, the Bomb Famille's Bourbon Peach Tea has Woodford Reserve Bourbon and Bowles Peach Schnapps with Fresh Brewed Sweet Tea for $16. New plush of Chef Mickey and Chef Minnie are now available at Disney's Contemporary Resort. The plush are inspired by the nearby Chef Mickey's restaurant and the actual costumes the characters wear during your character meal there. Mickey is wearing a chef's hat and uniform, complete with yellow necktie and black pants. The Chef Mickey's logo on his hat. Minnie has the logo on her hat as well, and of course, the full uh, apron and everything she wears at the restaurant. Again, I know I've said this before, kudos to whoever created this whole Chef Mickey's collection, the plush, the apron, the hat, more restaurant-specific merchandise, please. By the way, the plush are $24.99 each. The refurbishment of the Disney Village at Disneyland Paris is set to finally begin this year, and Disney has finally announced details about the transformation officially. In the midst of the 30th anniversary in Paris, the resort-wide transformation continues. Along with Walt Disney Studios Park's expansion plans and the Disneyland Hotel's royal transformation, Disney Village will see its own transformation over several years, including new dining options and refreshed shopping and entertainment. Disneyland Paris is sharing a first look at what to expect in the future of this 428,000 square foot complex. Located at the heart of Disneyland Paris, the Disney Village is the retail dining and entertainment complex between the theme parks and the hotels. The district, which is also turning 30 years old, uh, has more than doubled in size since it opened, constantly adding new options to reinvent the guest experience. By the end of the year, a phased transformation of the entire area will begin to give the district a brand new visual identity and introduce exciting new offerings. By combining the best Disney know-how with select complementary brand concepts, the reimagined Disney Village will celebrate timeless, family-friendly environments that are uniquely Disney. By day, stylish boutiques and innovative restaurants will draw guests in, and by night, thousands of lights will transform the area into a bustling wonderland. When the transformation is complete, uh, Disney Village will feature a relaxing lakeside park and a boardwalk, an enhanced pedestrian walkway system, brand new facades, relaxing terraces and patios, and lush landscaping. Its diverse eateries and collections of shops will expand dining and retail options for guests with innovative concepts from some of the world's most exciting brands for a completely enhanced experience that complements the parks. Quote, our plans to transform Disney Village is yet another example of how we continue to reimagine Disneyland Paris at the resort level, notably with our major expansion plan in progress at Walt Disney Studios Park, said Natasha Rafalski, the president of Disneyland Paris. We're very excited to bring new iconic and timeless concepts to the district that will appeal to a new generation of guests, whether they visit from our nearby resort hotels or from the local area. We can't wait for our guests to be surprised and delighted by what we have in store. The first step in the transformation plan will be a contemporary French brasserie, I'm gonna hope I'm saying that word right, in place of the current Cafe Mickey restaurant. Group Bertrand, uh, with its portfolio of renowned Parisian brasseries, has been chosen to take over the location and bring in a fresh concept that will both elevate the culinary experience and expand dining options for guests looking for French flavors in Disney Village. Rosalie, the new two-floor restaurant, will feature 500 seats in contemporary interiors. Of course, uh, you're looking at the concept art right now for that new restaurant. This is exciting. At the same time, you know, the Frank Gehry Disney Village, you know, look and design and an idea from 1992 is really great, but it has aged horribly and it's long past time for this. Happy to see Disneyland Paris getting some love. For the absolute latest Disney Parks news, head on over to WDWNT.com and follow us on all your favorite social media platforms. This program is brought to you by our official travel agent sponsor, The Vacationeer, the engineers of your next magical vacation. Sit back and let their team of vacation planning experts craft your family's next trip. The best part? Their services are free. Visit WDWNT.travel for details. If you're enjoying the show, be sure to like this video, subscribe to WDW News Today on YouTube for more great content, and click the bell for notifications. Also hit select all notifications so you never miss an episode of the show. You can support this show and others by joining the WDWNT Inner Globe Society at patreon.com slash WDWNT. And don't forget on Thursday, WDW News Tonight, March Madness continues. We're fighting, uh, we have the 64 greatest uh, attraction scenes in the 50 year history of Disney World battling it out. We had a lot of fun last week. I think it's gonna be a great show this week. Thursday at nine to watch it live, but it's always available on demand, including last week's show. You can watch it right now, right here on the channel. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Tom Corliss saying, enjoy the rest of your today, and have a great big beautiful tomorrow. And now we're going back to space. It's been like the last, I feel like I spent the last two months in space.
Ink and Paint celebrates the voices of women talking about what it means to be a Disney fan. Co-hosts Ashley Jasmer and Jill Diffendahl will join a panel of female Disney fans to discuss topics ranging from Disney princesses as role models, to raising Disney kids, to park-going preferences. Join us for lively discussion, stories, and debate about living your best Disney lifestyle.